Fantasy Smack Talk. Name goes over here. I'm Dustin. This is your Week 5 Fantasy Fix Show. As always, we start out with a little bit of a tip. So Brent, hit him with it. All right, so at this time of year, it's great to go after teams that are struggling or that have bi-week issues and start offering kind of trades, buying low, trying to work out some deals to improve your roster. And you know, I hate when we get in the forums like, here's my team, I wanna make a trade. It's impossible to work out that way. When you're working out trades, if you have, let's say you have a Gronk and a Jordan Cameron. So that means you have two good tight ends. If Gronk, assuming Gronk comes back this week, target Gronk plus a weaker running back for another team that has a bad tight end for a better running back. Look at it that way when you're working out trades, but really pick on the teams at the bottom of the barrel because they'll be looking up to shake up their rosters. All right, you might be wondering why we have all of these Koozies. on the table. Everyone likes koozies. So we decided to reward some of our forum members. So if we pick you as one of the people that we answer the questions for on the forum or on the show, you will get one of these. On the front, fantasy experts against drunk, drunk drafting. Drunk drafting is the leading cause of losing fantasy teams in the United States. Fantasy experts at FST remind you to draft responsibly. Yeah, that's me and the Herman We thought that was pretty, pretty clever. Let's get into those forum questions. First one comes from Sea Dog, one of the first owners of one of these. Yes, Sea Dog. Andre Johnson at San Fran or Anquan Bolden versus Houston. Right now, 78% of the community is saying Andre Johnson. Yeah, and I gotta agree with it. Bolden obviously had a monster game early on in the year, then a monster game last week. But regardless, I'm going with the better overall talent, I feel, and that's Andre Johnson. Plus, you're gonna have a much a Jonathan Joseph, a much more solid corner, locked in on Bolden all week. I gotta agree with the community, gotta go Andre Johnson here. All right, Dustin, 10, 29, 38. Wants to know which wide receiver should he be starting? Josh Gordon versus the Buffalo Bills on Thursday Night Football, or Larry Fitzgerald against the Carolina Panthers. Community says you should be going with Josh Gordon. Or 10, 29, 38 should be going with Josh Gordon. Do you agree? This one is very tough. The Thursday night games have been pretty blah lately. There's been really not a lot of excitement yeah, going on. You know, I think Larry Fitz is a little bit safer, but I think Josh Gordon has a slightly bigger upside, so I'm going to say Gordon on this one. It's a tough one. Going, going with the gamble guy. Yeah, it, it's a tough one. I do think Larry Fitz is a little safer, but... Which quarterback for the rest of the way, the man one, two, three wants to know? Should you go with Phillip Rivers or RG3? And he was considering dropping RG3 for Phillip Rivers. So I guess the question is, should he do that? 71% of the community says yes, he should. Come on, community. No, do not be doing this. I would definitely be keeping RG3. I understand Phillip Rivers as of right now is a top five quarterback. I still think there'll be a little bit of regression there. And regardless, I think RG3 has gotten more of an upside at this point. They're going to start using him a little bit more in the run. Be a little patient with him. I would certainly keep, if I was redrafting today, I would be taking Rivers a lot closer to RG3 than I did a month ago, but I'd still be taking RG3 over him. Do you right. concur? Yeah, the upside for RG3 is a lot higher. But if you could, I would try to roster both of them exactly. until you can figure this out. And but in the matchup game. If you don't have anyone else you can drop, I, I say stay patient with RG3. Let's get into our dud sleepers and deep sleepers. My dud, Rashard Mendenhall going up against Carolina. Now, obviously, if you have Mendenhall, you're probably not that excited about putting him in your lineup anyway, but I don't even really like him as a flex play at this point. I think Ellington's just going to keep creeping into his carries. He keeps outplaying Mendenhall each week, and I think he's just going to keep taking more and more until Mendenhall probably gets phased out if he doesn't get hurt before that happens. My sleeper is Terrell Pryor. You know, I was excited about him last week, you know, since he was going to have a matchup with the Redskins. You know, late, late scratch on that one, but he's still got a decent matchup against the Chargers, who haven't looked that great on defense this year. You know, I think if you have bye week issues with quarterback, or if you just don't like your quarterback matchup, Pryor could be a sneaky play for you. And my deep sleeper is LeGarrette Blunt. I don't really like the matchup against the Bengals, but it, this is a, a really deep sleeper. You know, if you're really desperate for... Uh, you know, just someone that can probably get you hopefully, you know, six plus points with a little bit of upside. You know, I think Blunt could be that guy because Ridley, you know, there's, he's a little banged up right now. They're saying he's going to play, but, you know, I, I still think Blunt is slowly just creeping in more and more on uh, Ridley's touches. All right, my dud is going to be James Jones, and it's the Green Bay Packers against the Detroit Lions. The Lions did well against the Bears and let up a million points. So I know what you're thinking. How could this possibly be? As far as the rankings that I did this week, 
I have Jones considerably lower than a lot of other sites, and the reason is it's the uncertainty of him. I feel that it's going to be it's kind of a hit or miss situation. Aaron Rodgers is not playing like Peyton Manning, so not all of his receivers are going to blow up every single week. It's just a little bit scary. I would go with a little bit safer plays than James Jones this week, if I had the options, that is. My sleeper is going to be Carolina's defense. Everyone's talking about the Atlanta because they're playing the Jets, the Rams because they're playing the Jags. But, you know, Carolina's playing Arizona, and Arizona's run game's been terrible. I know Carson has been decent, but he's still been getting sacked a decent amount of times. He still can turn the ball over. And Carolina's defense coming off the bye, which I really like as well, has played extremely well this year in terms of real football, I feel. It's been a solid defense. So I just like them as a pick-up-and-play if you didn't get those other guys. All right, and then my deep sleeper, that's going to be Robert Woods. Coming off a great game last week. Should have had two touchdowns, one good called back because... You know, he's kind of juggling it and they jumped in the stands. It's pretty stupid on his part. Regardless, EJ Manuel and Robert Woods are certainly having a connection. The two rookies have been hooking up. I think they did in week two as well, week four. I, I like the, that trend to keep continuing, because especially because Stevie Johnson is a little bit banged up. So I think he might be the number one target for EJ this week. All right, let's get into Mike's picks. His dud, Mike Wallace, going up against the Ravens. You know, minus the one good game for Wallace, he's really been, you know, a, pretty much a dud this terrible. year. Even dropped a couple passes Monday night. Doesn't look really great on that offense. It's not liking Mike Wallace. His sleeper, David Wilson, going up against the Eagles. You know, it looks like Wilson's stock is going up just a little bit each week since week one. You know, it couldn't have been much lower after week one, but he is starting to, to turn things around. Great guy to trade for right now. Before he blows up, I think he's going to blow up. A great buy low guy, and he should get... A lot of uh, plenty of plenty of touches on it with a deep Scott matchup. got cut. You gotta love that for David Wilson. You do have to go love get him. That. And his deep sleepers, Terrence Williams, going up against the Broncos. Go oh, from last week. Well, he was in fantasy. Ooh. He still had a Ooh. decent game. I mean, he had seven catches for 77 yards. So not terrible if you're just at a last minute just throwing him in as a flex play. So this week with a with a matchup against the Broncos, they're gonna be playing from behind. Play. Pay close attention to Miles Austin reports, though, because if Austin is back in, Williams doesn't look is good. out. But doesn't look good. Doesn't look like Austin's gonna play. Look at all those koozies. Close it up, Dustin. So this that might will be do your it. <laughs> if you want a chance for one of these koozies, post some questions in our forums. I'm Dustin. This is Nameco. I wanted to put more on, but Dustin wouldn't let me. There's no fun. Enough koozies. No fun. We had like this many. It would have been awesome. I would have knocked them over.